All right, before we get started with this week's episode of Wrestling Perspective, P.D. Williams and myself, we want to talk about Blue Chew. P.D., Blue Chew, it's WrestleMania weekend. What better way to get amped up every day this week than take your Blue Chew? Ooh, how's she going, eh? I mean, Blue Chew, I mean, what more can you say about Blue Chew? On WrestleMania weekend, the biggest like weekend of the entire wrestling year, I mean... This has Blue Chew written all over it. For our, our our audience, there we go, for our audience only, if you go to BlueChew.com, use a promo code PERSPECTIVE, we will send you a free shipment. All you have to do is pay $5 for shipping and handling because, let's be honest, PD isn't driving it to your house. I'm not driving it to your house, so it has to get there somehow. Yeah, I mean, and we can't Uber it to your house or anything like that, Lyft, whatever the case may be. $5 shipping in hand, and that's cheaper than an Uber or Lyft, so uh, yeah, let it's me, free on us. Let me ask you something. What does one of your t-shirts cost? Oh, it depends if it's a front and back one, but anywhere from 20 to $25. What does one of your autographed pictures cost? Uh, $10 minimum. So Blue Chew is cheaper than any merch most people will get at any wrestling show anywhere, right? Uh, I would definitely say yes. Especially WrestleMania weekend when wrestlers kind of hike the price up just a little bit. Blue Chew will always stay the same for you, our fans. I mean, man, tw- okay, so yeah. $10 for an autograph. WrestleMania weekend, you're looking at like 20 bucks, maybe like $30 for a shirt. Um, yeah, WrestleMania weekend, if anything. Uh, Blue Chew is going to say the same, if not discounted. Hence, free. I mean, it's free, pretty much. You just got to pay shipping and handle. That, yeah, easily. It's made from the same active ingredients as Viagra and Ciela, so you know it works. It's chewable, so it works faster than the two pills. Made in the USA, which means it's uh, cheaper. And you get to do it online, which means no awkward doctor visits. And it comes in a discreet package, so your neighbor's not like, oh, I know what he's doing tonight. <laughs> and then going to the doctors and you're like, yeah, you know, and especially when you're young, but you just want to have like, you know, fun with your girl or, 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 or whoever you want to have fun with. And the doctor's like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't need that. I'm not prescribing you that. Well, you don't have to worry about the doctor now because you can just order it online. And, and I'll be honest with you. You hit the nail on the head as we wrap up this live read young. If you're young and you hear this and you're like, I don't need blue chew. Listen, man, first of all, I don't care what you do with it, but order it from us. Second of all, if you do order it from us and you get it, try it out. You may not need it, but it's like, you know what? If Shawn Michaels doesn't need Blue Chew, but if Shawn Michaels took it during WrestleMania, he it, it just enhances his Mr. WrestleMania performance. That's It's like a performance enhancement drug. Like, why not get the edge on all the competition? Just like guys in like any organization or anything like that. They take the creatine, performance enhancement drugs. You're going to be on top of your game, and you're going to perform better than everybody else. So if you definitely want to show out for your husband, your wife, your significant other, I don't care who it is, just do it. It helps us out a ton. And also, for at least this week only, our very special advertiser is Pancakes and Pile Drivers. From Let me tell you something. WrestleCon weekend, if you're going to New York, you're listening to this 2019, you want to go to this event. It's Saturday, April 6th, Wrestle Revolver, Pancakes and Pile Drivers 3. It's affordable. It's fun. You all wrestle. Listen, if you're going to NXT and you're like, what am I going to do in the afternoon? You're going to eat breakfast anyways, right? So you might as well eat breakfast, pancakes, and watch some great wrestling, Pete. Yeah, 11 a. I think it's at like 11 a.m. Wrestling Revolver, um, and then, I mean, I mean the, the, so many people advertise for the show, I don't even know where to start, but, I mean, you can watch that before, it, and that's what it's going to be. This whole weekend, it's always been all about wrestling. You know, it starts Friday, goes all on the Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's like a big, long weekend of wrestling, so why not involve uh, Wrestling Revolver with that? Sammy Callahan's promotion, so if you love Sammy Callahan, who has been amazing to you and I, I, we'll yep. talk more about Sammy during the show when we talk about this past tapings, but go there, check it out. Don Callis will be there, David Starr, Brian Cage will be there, the Lucha Brothers will be there, the Rascals, LAX will be there. I mean, there are so many people here that I, 
let's see, Falabala will be there, Fatu will be there. Uh, man, I'm, I'm reading Ace Austin, which is part of the Rascals. Tessa Blanchard will be there. I, you know, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I, it looks like Matt Cross might also be there too. Yeah, Matt Cross. I've had uh, a few good matches with that guy. I mean, I, I'm surprised I didn't. we didn't wrestle each other until later on in our career. Um, but Matt Cross, I remember I wanted to do a storyline with him one time because everybody thought that myself and Matt Cross had a kind of like the same build at one time, but then he grew this big, long beard and stuff like that. We didn't look alike, but, uh, yeah, Matt Cross, one of my favorite guys, uh, to be in the ring with. So there you go. Pancakes and pal driver three, Google it, go to wrestlerevolver.com. But go there, and when you go there, tell him you heard us there so he knows that, look, it works. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of ours, an amazing guy, horrible at answering texts, but he's he's a really cool guy. You know, I, I don't even know if I have Sammy's number. Um, so, I mean, you're one step ahead of me on that one. You might. And you're waiting on a text probably from two years ago. From him, so. That's probably exactly true. I probably texted him something like a long time ago, like, uh, hey, who do you think is going to be the next president? And I'm still waiting on that or something like that. Oh, absolutely. Hey, congratulations on signing with Impact for the first time. Crickets. That's yeah. So right. if you're waiting on Sammy Callahan to text you back about free tickets, hold your breath because it ain't going to happen, buddy. You know, and to tell you the truth, I don't even know if I've ever seen a cell phone in Sammy Callahan's hand. So, um, yeah, wh- whatever, man. I can't be honest. I don't know if I – I know he has one. I've called him on it and talked to him unless it's like his doppelganger. Anyways, you ready? Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> It feels like it's been forever, but it is the wrestling perspective. I'm Dennis Farrell, and he's Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? It, Again. I'm trying to do the math here, but I don't know if we've done a show for three or four weeks now. You know what? Uh, I think the, the last little bit, like last month anyways, or this month, the beginning of this month, I was coming over to your place, and we were doing stuff like on Periscope and doing it live and all that kind of stuff, and then... Um, yeah, the week before the tapings wasn't good. Uh, you know, we we got a lot of stuff recorded during the tapings, and then uh, this week, you know, it's kind of we didn't get one this week. If you're counting today, uh, it's like the following week. So yeah, I mean, it, it's been a while. I missed you, buddy. Oh man, I missed you too, and I, I just saw you like last weekend. We like spend the whole weekend together. It was it was a blast. We will absolutely talk about that. I have a lot of questions, by the way, for you, and the first question comes from me, and really, Petey Williams, Impact Wrestling, murder on TV? Yeah, you know... Murder? You, so, you killed yeah. someone! Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> The first time I – okay, let's take it back a little bit to Bound for Glory, okay? I'm sitting in the truck, and it was right before that, uh, I I believe, the um, heavyweight, you know, Impact World Championship match against Austin Aries and Johnny Impact, that infamous one. And I'm sitting in the truck waiting for, you know, my time, but then they have to play, obviously, the pre-taped Undead Realm segment where Allie goes in the Undead Realm. This is back in October. And I'm watching this, and I I don't know, like, what – is going to transpire. I'm, I'm watching it for the first time, just like everybody else. And then I see Sue Young, or no, I'm sorry. I see, James was it Mitchell. Allie? Yeah, no, I see, I see Jim Mitchell, but Allie like takes an ax and like, you know, puts it in the neck of Sue Young. And I'm like, what? And then I was like, Rosemary's big return and stuff. And, you know, Sue Young, I guess the ax didn't affect her. Cause it's the end dead realm, whatever the case may be. And I'm like, wait, did we just like murder somebody on TV? So that was the first time that Impact's done that. And then now, you know, writing Ali off of our, our show, she gets murdered with the Freddy Krueger knives, I guess. Um, so it's tough. Like me being, you know, you and I, Dennis, we grew up, uh, stuff like this wasn't around. You know, it was just wrestling. You know, there, there were some like uh, vignettes and all that kind of stuff, but 
like murder and like uh, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of newer to us. I think in the future, you know, we're going to have a lot more of this stuff. I know Lucha Underground's done a lot of this type of stuff before, like where it's very produced and like movie style and all that. I, I really think we're, we're talking about this now and it's just like 10 years from now, it's like, there's going to be murder plots on TV. Like that's how they're just going to write off people off of, like Dean Ambrose, you know, leaving WWE, the, they would have already murdered him by now. Wow. Well, I, I, I cannot wrap my head around it. I watched it. My jaw hit the floor goes, I didn't know what was coming. I did not. I didn't. You we, you and I, we have a no spoiler between us. You don't, if yep. there's a taping I can't go to or I don't see some of the stuff that gets taped off site, you, you won't spoil it for me. I'm watching and I go, is it, is she, did they just kill her? Now, I get that you have the loophole of undead, so let's say if Allie ever does come back, you can bring her back as maybe a zombie or something else. But holy cow, murder, Petey Williams, murder. Yeah, murder's happening. But, I mean, it's in the undead realm. Like like I just mentioned, like Allie put an axe in Sue Young's neck, and she's fine, right? She came back on her show and stuff like that, and they actually, she actually came back in the same skit. Right. So uh, the undead realm is just different. And I think that's why we're getting away with it. It's not like, you know, Allie just went home and she got murdered. It was like the undead realm, which is obviously a fictitious place where, uh, you know, pretty much anything can happen. Like uh, Kevin Sullivan is the devil, apparently. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if rules don't apply or whatever, but I, I just think it's something different that's outside the box. I still don't know if I'm OK with it. Um not my cup of tea, but it's entertaining. Nonetheless, I it's entertaining. I remember I I know they filmed that in Vegas off site, so not this Windsor tapings, like that's been filmed for a while and stuff. And I remember Jimmy talking about it and and, and going through it and just like I think I mentioned this on the podcast before. Like I'm watching his passion about talking about it when when right before they film it and this is gonna happen, he's going through it all and I'm like, Man, this is gonna be really good. I can't wait to see it. And it's just good to see it come to life. Kind of like when you read a book and then you watch a movie and you're like, oh, that, that that's how it was supposed to transpire. Any legal ramifications uh, at least written into Impact TV for this? Because, you know, you've, you've murdered someone on TV. There has to be some sort of, you know, kayfabe legal ramifications. Or if it's... No, no. no it's, 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 it's all... <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's what, like, bugs me about wrestling um so you know it's so hard to say like we know wrestling pre is predetermined you know it's a show what everybody knows that by now yeah, yeah everybody knows that okay no. it's predetermined i don't like to use word fake because i've been in the ring and it hurts so when i hear fake that means you don't hurt stunt doubles come in for you and take the bumps and all that kind of stuff that not fake predetermined is the word i like to use um but, like, you know, like, for example, this last set of uh, impact tapings we had at Windsor, you know, at the venue we were at, you know, uh, for whatever reason, you can't have, like, intergender wrestling is the big thing right now where, where guys are wrestling gals and, you know, it's awesome and people are loving it, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, this last set of Windsor tapings, we couldn't have any uh, man-on-woman violence, even though, you know... <laughs> We know it's predetermined and it's it's a show. Uh, for whatever reason, that's not okay. So that's what kind of you know boggles my mind a little bit. Like we could kill somebody on TV, it's okay because it's you know predetermined. It's fake. It's a show, you know. But oh man, on woman violence, like okay, come on guys, like let, let's be realistic about it. It's entertainment. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. Well, Brian BQ wants to know, I'm curious if there was any hesitation to end the angle this way. Was there all? Was this always the end game, or was there a scenario where Rosemary saves her, which we all expected? Um, you know, at that I'm not sure. Uh, because I know they do, um, when they write all the shows, they do, you know, they do it at DeMore's Mansion there, and, you know, they have a pool party, all that kind of stuff. It's which great we, time. I've never been invited to the pool party. Um, I will have to invite you. You've been to Scott's, right? I've been to Scott's once. Okay. 
once. So I have, uh, yeah, okay, all right. So uh, that's one more than most of the people listening right he now, or maybe all the people listening. Yeah, so, he wasn't even um, there. But yeah, they, they 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 do all the writing and stuff like that, and all that kind of stuff, and then they make any change to whatever the case may be. So I don't know what the 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 end game plan was, or if they had one, or whatever the case may be. That I I, I just know that. You know, Ali was leaving the company, and you know what do we do? Oh, let's kill her off. You know, and he, I'm okay with that. Like, Ali's not obviously really dead because she's tweeting and all that kind of stuff. And we all know, um, you know, she signed with AEW, or at least that's what's being portrayed on you know social media right now. Um, I'm okay with that. I think they should probably kill off more people. I think it's it'd be more entertaining. It's like, oh, how's this person gonna get killed off? Just like on soap operas and stuff like that. I I, I love that. It's different than just Oh, this person's losing because he's on his way out. Uh, right. uh, oh, okay. All right. No, no, that, I'm not 100% on board with that, but I see what you're saying. And I, I think it, the only way it works is if you do something supernatural like this. If, if there's a wrestling match and Johnny Impact pulls out a knife and then fake stabs someone, it doesn't no, work. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think that's okay. Like, if it's in the undead realm, I think it's a totally different thing because people know yeah, it's just it's it's not the actual world that we live in. It's the undead realm. OK. All right. Well, let's uh, let's, let's move on. We have a lot to talk about this. This set of impact tapings, I got to say, was probably from my point of view, one of the best as as hanging out backstage. I we talk and joke a lot about how more and more people are getting to know me, but like, yeah, I found myself not sitting alone a lot. People would come up and sit and talk like Sammy walks by and was offended. I didn't say hi to him. Like, cause you know, I try to be respectful and these guys are coming in and the last thing they need to do is shake another hand or say hi another time. Cause they, you know, there's that whole locker room protocol where you got to go up when you see someone and shake his hands. I think, I think that's adequated and stupid, by the way. We can talk about my views on that, but you know, a little yeah, bit yeah. later. But you know, he walks by and I'm like, Oh, there's Sammy. I'll I'll say hi to him later. It's like, hey, you're you're not gonna say hi to me. I'm like, oh man, I didn't want to bug you. And and that made me feel kind of cool. And I gotta say something. Chris Sabin, this was the longest I got to spin with him. That guy is like undercover funny. One of the funniest guys I know. The drive home from the last of the tapings was the most fun I've had to car with you and another wrestler ever. Yeah, and that's how Saban is. Like, you, I think you hit the nail on the head when he said undercover funny. Like, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, he's not a funny guy, but he hits these one liners sometimes. That's they're, they're they're just hilarious, and it was really good. I, I don't know if you could tell Dennis, but. You know, Sanjay was gone, you know, and I, you could tell. Yes. Obviously, Sanjay's my friend, but now Saban's there, and obviously, Saban's one of my good buddies, and just being there with them, getting the, and the cat's already out of the bag. Like, you know, obviously, he was an agent and stuff, uh, you know, working for us, and, you know, it was so cool. Like, just, you know, I started in the business with them so many years ago. And then where he's never aged in it before, like or produced. And I was like, yeah, I'll show you the ropes and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I showed him how it all works with the, the camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And what was funny was um, I he was had one of the first matches, like the first explosion explosion match on the show. And you remember Lance Storm was there also as an agent. You mm -hmm. remember that? Yes, I was there. OK. OK. So Lance. I, unbeknownst to me, he's never produced or agent in his either. This was his first time. So somebody said to him, and I, I didn't know this, so I made sure I took, you know, Saban under my wing. I'm like, this is how you do things. This is what, you know, the director needs to know, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know Lance has never done that before, right? Or hasn't done that before. And I, I go in the truck, and then I get Saban all set up, and then he does the first match. I think Lance has the second match, and Lance goes in there, and Saban's telling me this, and he says, uh, Lance is asking him questions, and Saban goes, I don't know. I've never done this before. 
<laughs> and Lance goes, I haven't done this before either. They just said, go watch the person in front of you and figure it out. And like, they were like uh, blind leading the blind. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, but you know, I, I, I went in there for a save and I'm like, you know, this is how you do a commercial break, all that kind of stuff and so on and so forth. But, um, I, he caught on quick. Um, one of his matches that he produced, um, it was what we call, uh, an enhancement match, right? Uh, Josh Alexander and, uh, Ethan page, they're now known as, and this is a spoiler alert, so shut it off right now if you don't want to know it. Um, they're known as the tag team, the North. Which I don't think and, that's a huge spoiler. Yeah, it, it, well, it's not a huge spoiler because, I mean, whatever. People probably already know, and everybody knows Josh Alexander is part of the company now. But they're going to be a tag team. They're called the North. And um, they had a really, really good enhancement match. It was it was probably one of the best enhanced matches I've seen. A lot of the times when guys come off the Indies, just sign with impact. Usually they're having competitive matches their whole career. And they don't know how to do like an enhancement match where they're just getting all their stuff in. Right. And a lot of the times, you know, when these guys come in, they give the opponent too much stuff when it's really the focus is spotlight is you're getting over right now. You have to be the one. You're the superstar, so on and so forth. And a lot of times uh, the wrestlers fail at this, and I've seen it time and time again. But these guys, the first time they went out there, they hit it out of the park, man. Like, it was an awesome enhancement match. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. And Saban was the agent for the match. And it was just one of the best enhancement matches I've seen uh, in Impact in a long time. You you guys have, and by the way, I, I got to say, I, I hope I'm making TV in the coming weeks. Uh, I oh, won't... yes. You were part of a vignette, weren't you? Yes. So I won't spoil too much about it. Because... Okay. All right. So Say spoiler alert if you're going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil anything. So I'm standing around. And, I, you know, I, the secret to being at any wrestling backstage is looking nice. If you show up wearing a wrestling shirt... They're going to usher you right out. If you look like you belong, you belong. So I always try to dress a little nice, right? Um, I'm standing there, and our good friend Jeff, who which we need to get him on the podcast. We keep saying this. So yes, many great definitely. stories. Uh, walks up to me and says, hey, you're, well, you're well-dressed. We need you for a restaurant scene. I said, all right. Uh, so we're standing around catering, and there's probably 15, 20 of us. And we're standing around catering because we have to get some food for to make it look like we're eating. And then everybody's like, why are these guys cutting in line in the catering? So they have to explain that they're not taking all the food. They're getting a little portion. So we all get it, and we all head to this little restaurant. And we're sitting there, and everybody has a date in the restaurant, right? Boy, girl, boy, girl. Except me and this other guy who I'm sitting there talking to. And he's like, you know, I'm just trying to make it in the business. The story you hear backstage. And yep. and I go, you know what we need to do? We need to set ourselves apart because we're the only couple here that is boy-girl or boy-boy. He goes, what do you think? And I said, maybe we should be a homosexual couple here. And he goes, you wouldn't do that. I go, I would absolutely play this. I am I am going to ham it up, right? And And... So we're sitting there, we're holding hands, and I'm looking lovingly into this guy's eyes. Beautiful eyes, by the way. So, oh. yeah. So we're sitting there, and we start talking. And now, he's an African-American guy. I'm a white guy, and we're talking. And we're supposed to have chatter, but we're not, you know, don't talk too loud. Cause they're not going to really pick it up. Because we were at the last seats in the back by the window. And I look, I go, I don't think people will accept our love. And he goes... I get it because the white and black thing. I go, no, because you're Canadian and I'm American. And, <laughs> and I'm not sure my family. And now everybody around us can kind of hear us a little bit. And they're laughing. And I, I'm i just going to say, I hope that makes it into impact television. Um, you, you just, I hope it does too. You just never know what they're going to cut. Um, I know Jeff was telling me that like Tessa threw a bunch of water on him, yes. like multiple takes and stuff like that. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, where, where did you, where did you guys film this? I know you said it was a restaurant scene. Yes. Uh, was so, it upstairs, downstairs? What? It was downstairs. If you go past the quad 
over by the security desk, there's actually a nice sit down restaurant in the in the school. Like by the Tim Hortons where we were at? Uh yes, but on the other side. Hmm. So it was a sit down restaurant. It looked really nice and we we went in there and, and shot a few things and I, I don't want to give any of it away because the, the concept is pretty cool, actually, for this vignette. Yeah, I, 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 I read it on the run sheet and stuff like that, and it's pretty cool. And um, don't want to give too much away, yeah, as well. But, uh, man, I'm so glad you got to make Finally. yet another. So you're, you're always in a restaurant, it seems like. Remember you played that bartender like a year ago? I did, yes. For uh, Yep, and now. For Adventure. I what, it, I just, yeah, that's right. Yes. And, and now you're getting to play, uh, you know, a, a, a guest at a restaurant. People are going to start catching on. So, um, but you know, what? we have the new, we have the the pay per view coming up in Toronto with a set of TV tapings, and you know they're going to use you for some other sort of restaurant scene. They gotta. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you're the guy for it. I hope so. It'd be nice, you know, because I tried. I think the first thing I tried to pitch myself for was kind of towards the end where, you know, there was like a week or two where Sammy Callahan went on this haircutting spree. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, And, and I tried to say, because you know what, I'm, I'm good for a good laugh. I tried to say, why don't I sit in the front row and have him pull me over and shave my head so it looks like he's going after fans and... I think they uh, that was like a week too late because they had kind of moved on from that aspect of the storyline. But boy, that would have been great. Yeah, I, I remember them doing that hair cutting. They actually uh, ended up cutting the hair of uh, Dave Christ. I, I yeah, Dave Christ before that, um, the head of like our our ring crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I think he just played like a civilian or whatever the case may be. Um, Dave, they did. Yep. I, and I then eventually Sammy got his hair cut when he lost the Penta uh, last slam over three. Yeah, I remember that. So I, I so I'm, I'm hoping it, it, just hanging out, you know, things like this. Cause that for me, that's fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, so, and here's the thing, Dennis, like when you first started coming to shows with me, you weren't like thinking like, oh, I'm going to be a uh, part of the show or whatever the no. case may be. No, not at all. But then there you're, you're sitting there actually like doing nothing or I shouldn't say nothing, just like mingling, shooting the breeze, whatever the case may be. And they come to you and say like, hey, you'd be great for this segment out of all the people they could pick. You'd be great for this segment. Come on. And they call you by name. So, I mean, it, it, and, and remember when you first got there um, <laughs> uh, this past weekend, people are like, hey, Dennis, how's it going? And you're like, uh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, you. How's it going? And I, I'm the same way, Dennis. Like a lot of people are like, "Hey, good to see you again." I'm like, I don't remember names because I meet like a thousand people a day or whatever the case may be, and it's hard to remember everybody's name. So people are coming up to you now, remembering you. Hey, hey, you're Dennis Farrell. Like, hey, how's it going? The the best part is I'm standing there with Chris Saban. By the way, Chris did something. You know, a lot of times we show up to these shows with other wrestlers, and they go off and do their thing. <laughs> Saban was one of the only guys in a it's workload. I get it. And it's not a knock on all those guys, but he was one of the only guys that would come back and hang out with me after he got done doing something. So I, I really appreciated that, but we got there where him and I are saying they're talking and all of a sudden all these people are coming up to me and saying hi and walking past Chris Saban. Like, and I'm like, (laughs) they didn't even know who he was. I'm like, there's something. There's something wrong with this picture. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I, I got to apologize, Then it's Like, so here's the thing. When we're in like Vegas or like Mexico or wherever the case may be, I don't wrestle. Like I just do the producing stuff and I have a lot more downtime. Uh, when I'm at these Windsor shows or Toronto shows since Scott's like adamant about using me because we're it's a Canadian audience, whatever the case may be, I have to wrestle. And produce. And I remember, like, go, like I'm in my wrestling gear. I just got done my match. The, the next match, I have to produce the match. I, I run in the truck, and Lance is like, Lance Storm is like, I don't know how you do it, man. I couldn't wrestle and produce, man. Like, how do? You, and it, but it's just, it's second nature to me now because, you, like, I'm so used to that. That's what I do. So, uh, that's why, like, at these Windsor shows and Toronto shows, the ones that you're able to attend. I'm more busier than usual because I have to do both, and it sucks because you know I, I don't get to hang out with you as much. You you know it, it was, and it's okay. 
I, I understand and I get it. And I'm becoming more familiar now. I can, like Sammy Callahan comes up to me and asks to record something with me, which blew my mind. So now I'm starting yeah. to get a little comfortable where maybe you're busy, but I can go to someone I kind of know and be like, hey, would you record about 10 minutes with me? Uh, you know, and that's kind of, we'll play the Sammy thing a little bit later in the week, promoting pancakes and pile drivers. But wow. So. We got about everybody on our wish list. We got uh, Rich Swan, Willie Mac, yep. which Willie Mac, I just want to hug him. He is the most lovable, nervous guy I've ever met. You know, and, and, and Willie, I, I really like Willie too. Like when I first met him and all that kind of stuff, like uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when you when you play the interview and stuff yes. like that the first time. On this show, I know by we the way. talk about it and stuff. Um, but then I wrestled him that same night. And, uh, man, Willie is so funny. And when he's backstage, you know, he, he does swear. Not a lot, but he swears. <laughs> and I remember saying to him, and I, I don't know if you were I was there, there yeah. when I said it. To, oh, you were there yeah. when I said it to him? I said, Willie, I'm like, uh, you know, you want to do our podcast? He's like, yeah, man, sure. We'll just say he said, yeah, man, sure. Right. But he said a little bit more than that. And I said, yeah, the only thing is I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, don't swear okay and he's like uh, why and i'm like well you know i mean we kind of have like a pg type feel for our podcast you know we, we we know we have some kids that listen to our podcast and stuff we like to keep it like you know family friendly and all that kind of stuff um and he's like all right and i didn't know how the interview was gonna go but willie did a great job amazing and he I, he didn't swear once man and i was like it was really weird interacting with willie when he wasn't doing that. Uh, but man, Willie's so cool, man. Like I, I just, I love watching him and his facial expressions. I think he's, he's one of the best out there right now. He has a really bright future ahead of him. He, he was so fun and I loved talking to him and I loved watching him because he was just nervous. And I don't know how many times he's been backstage now with impact, but he just, he came off of like a little bit nervous and it was, I walked up to him and I said, look, I really appreciate everything you do. I've been a big fan of yours for about a year and a half now. You know, will you come do the podcast with Petey? Oh, yeah, man, I'd love to. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And, you know, Brian Cage came by and said hi to me. He probably doesn't know who I am, but still, that was kind of cool. Yeah, no, and, and I mean, you know, and I, I kind of want to I kind of want to do another interview with Willie and say, Willie, you're allowed to swear. Just, just Yes. Just to see how different it is, you know, and we'll just put a disclaimer out like before. Like, so I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to we're going to have to get uh, Jeff on the uh, oh, yeah. uh, on our show. OK, so Jeff is um, Scott's like one of Scott's right hand men. Um, he used to be a ref there. He he actually plays junk food. Jeff on um, 89 X. It's, it's a on the radio. It's a morning show. Um and when he tells these stories, though, he swears. He does. But it adds to the story. Like, believe it or not, like, sometimes I hate when people swear because it just sounds like yes. they're just swearing to put emphasis, like, and they don't have another verb that they could put in there. And it's very, like, I, I don't know. It just seems like, man, you, you could have used any other verb in there. But with Jeff, like, it adds <laughs> to the to the story. And we're going to get Jeff on. And, we, you know, we're probably going to put a disclaimer or, like, we say, hey, you know, there's coarse language in this, so if you don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. But um, you're probably going to need it for the story just to hear the emphasis on it. And we're going to have to get Jeff on, and it's going to be a great time. The stuff, the stories he has are amazing. And it's one right after the other, right after the other. You, Petey and I, we will do the intro, and that's the last time you'll hear from us. Yeah, that, that's that's probably it. We'll say, we'll, we'll do the intro. We'll say, uh, here's the disclaimer. Um, we might say, Hey, uh, tell us a story about this. And he'll just have it lined up. Like when he's t- telling those Larry destiny stories, yes. uh, about being in California and stuff, I don't want to give anything away just in case he tells them, but, um, he's definitely going to come. We're going to film it on Periscope and stuff just so you could see it. And it's going to be a good time. Some more questions here. Khan wants to know any news about a better TV deal. Um, no, I don't hear. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the short answer of it. I mean, we just signed with Pursuit. We're excited about that. We have, we're on Twitch. Um, I think that's a big thing we're pushing right now is on Twitch. I know I, I, I'm guessing 
the majority of our audience and fan base watches our show on Twitch just because it's easier to watch it than to find the Pursuit channel. Um, I know I watch it on Twitch. That's how I watch it. So uh, I haven't heard anything yet. I just, I know like last night, Don Callis beat Kenny Omega one, two, three in the middle of the ring. So um, <laughs> did you see that, Dennis? No. You, you didn't no. on the internet? No. Um, I guess they had a show in Winnipeg, some sort of local show, and it, uh, Don Callis gave the code breaker to Kenny Omega and pinned him one, two, three. Well, congrats to Don Callis for that amazing... I, I, I guess so, right? Uh, let's see here. So you may not have known this, but I guess either today or yesterday, Dave Meltzer on the show uh, gave Impact its highest praise ever and says, right now, Impact is putting out a better show than Raw and SmackDown. Uh huh. What what's your reaction hearing someone like Dave Meltzer give something like Impact, who doesn't really get kudos? Impact is one of these uh, promotions that more than gets kudos, they still get knocked for past uh, endeavors. I guess you would say past infractions. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing, man. It's so hard to wash that. I don't know what you call it. That stink off of you like if you you say the words tna or impact to somebody if you say it to 20 people in a room they're and that heard of it before they're all going to have their own opinion on it they're all good they're all going to remember something a little bit different they're not going to say all the same thing so i mean it, it kind of sucks but at the same time for the past year we've been like like consistently delivering a good product. It's just, it sucks because you, we've just like buried ourselves in the old regime, like so far down that it's, it's hard to dig out of that. It really is. But it's good that somebody like Meltzer is noticing like, Hey, this, this product is pretty good. Cause I know they put a lot of thought into it. Jimmy Jacobs is like, man, he's so brilliant. I mean, I don't know if you're there when we do our production meeting, but you know, he has, He's just, he's so good. Like mm -hmm. he's so good at what he does. And like, and Scott just being able to put everything together. Same with Don, just, you know, you got dreamer. It, it's a good product right now. It's just, it's too bad that, um, a lot of people aren't giving it. I, I shouldn't say a second chance. It's more like a, a seventh chance. Um, because we're, it's, it's a really good show right now. And we have a lot of good talent and, um, man, it's really good. I just I wish a lot of people would, give it our seventh chance i guess you could say tommy dreamer's another guy that we we tease a lot on the show for you know telling us he'll come on the podcast and then no showing us i wouldn't say no showing us but not getting back to us but he, he's another one of those guys where i'll be standing there having a conversation and he'll come up to me and like ask me baseball stuff right and between you and i yeah, I used to do ba fantasy baseball for ESPN and all that stuff, and I'm a, I'm a fan now of baseball. A I hate to say the word casual watcher. I'll watch whenever I can, but I'm not as plugged in as I used to be. So now he'll be like asking me about like a third string minor league player, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. Good, good guy. And then like, what are you doing talking well, to me? Here's the problem: like people know you. Because pe people ask me, ha, ha, what's Dennis's credentials? What are what are Dennis's credentials? Why do you like? Demore asked you he? that recently. Yeah, yeah, and I said, well, he used to work for ESPN, you know, the fantasy football, blah 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 blah. Okay, so I think they think when they just hear the word ESPN, you know, about all sports, you love all sports, even though I say fantasy football, like clear as day, they think you know all sports. Yeah. So, um, and, and the thing is, Dennis, like. You, I, I've I've heard you talk baseball with Scott Demore before, and you guys are talking about people that I don't even know exist. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm good friends with him, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. So you know, obviously Demore passes on that to Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, who loves baseball, is like, oh, Dennis knows stuff about baseball. Okay, let's talk about baseball. It's like, not that you necessarily know stuff about baseball. You just you are friends with some people yep. in that business. They assume you know everything. That's like saying, like, "Hey, you know everything about wrestling because you're friends with me and a couple other people in wrestling." No, absolutely not. But you know what? People are going to talk to you about wrestling. Let's get to some more questions here. Uh, do you have any idea if any new talent is coming? 
uh, let's see. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but um, there were some debuts. I, I mean, I guess we already talked about uh, Josh Alexander debuting, so and they already announced him. But there's um, at least one more. I could think of two more okay. that debuted in Windsor. Um, so yeah, there there's a few more talent coming. Now they just recently announced Impact a partnership with OVW, right? Is yep. Christopher Wilkes wants to know: Will we see Impact moving wrestlers that still with the company that can't get TV time to OVW? That I don't know. I I don't know if it's going to be the reverse. Whereas uh, Al Snow running the company is like, hey, this is like one of my best guys developmentally you know you want to give him a chance on tv mm -hmm. and we do that um i don't know if it's going to be the same thing where we like hey you know let's uh you, we're going to send you down to ov oh OV, ovw and you're going to work on your skills uh be off tv for a little while until we bring you back up i don't know if it's going to be that way um but I, i'm assuming it's going to be like hey find these guys develop them and then we're going to put them on tv when they're ready okay Charles Brody wants to know, do you anticipate there being a joint show between Impact, AAA, and AEW, being that AEW is partnered with Impact and AEW? Not AEW. I said that all wrong. But, you know, AAA. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. That I don't know. Um, but just looking ahead, um, social media yesterday when I saw Don Callis give Kenny Omega in the code breaker in Winnipeg and pinning him. I'm like, wow. Okay. You know, people are saying like a VP of impact wrestling just gave a code breaker and beat the VP of AEW. I'm like, Oh, what's going on here? So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of like cross promotional type thing. I, I kind of agree with you. It's too early to tell what's going yeah, on. Yeah, very, very too early. Right now, like, I know AEW is focusing on uh, their show coming up in May. That's going to be their main focus. And if there's crash promotional stuff in the meantime, great. I know the, the Bucks and other you know, Cody and other AEW type you know, talent are is showing up on independent shows. It'd be interesting if they showed up on an Impact show. It can, really would. Can we get the Bucks back on? Man, you know, we need to. Um, now, I haven't talked to them since that day, but, you know, maybe they're if they're taking another hike to the Japanese consulate, maybe we get them on the podcast. Yeah, now that they can openly talk about things, I think it'd be interesting because I, I like to think that I ask some pretty interesting questions that catch some of these guys by surprise. It's not like, you know, I guess I'd say that you wouldn't get asked on a normal wrestling podcast, you know? Yeah, and I mean, these guys are getting paid, you know, big money. If I had to guess, it's probably like one and a half million dollars or something like that. Like, they're, they're, they're getting paid some big money um, right now. And when we first had them on the podcast, AEW wasn't even announced yet. They, I, know, I think they just filed for the trademark like the day prior. And we asked, like, hey, should we ask about that? And they were like, yeah, I think it would be weird if you didn't ask about it. Yes. So, and obviously, they couldn't talk about it. And now, you know, um, they are where they are. So it will be interesting uh, to see if we can get them back on and ask questions. And I got to say, talking to Eli Drake, wow. The one, question, yeah. the one question we get asked a lot now since the Eli Drake interview, and I'll ask you, and, and okay. both of us – I guess we're going to have to play Guess the Future. Does Eli Drake stay with Impact or does he go? Because he was very, you know, down the middle and wouldn't show his hands with our interview. But your feelings, does he stay or does he go? You know, that's a great question. And, you know, just so you know how my relationship was, is with Eli, uh, you know, I mean, I don't say much to Eli. Like, no. you know, I say hi, bye. We're very... And I, I, I alluded to that on the podcast. I said, we don't have, you know, uh, like a personal relationship. I'd say we have a really good professional relationship. And I know him and I both enjoyed our match together. We respect each other professionally. Um, that's where we stand. Um, does he stay? That is, would I like to see him stay? Like in my heart? Yes, absolutely. You and I talk about it all the time. Like 
he's one of the the coolest guys portrayed on television. Like he's got that going for him. Like he's just a cool dude. Um, you know, the funny thing is, I I know he 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 talks about like. And a lot of people talk about, like, you know, he wasn't used right and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's the thing about pro wrestling. Let's just take the Dean Ambrose, you know, so everybody can relate to it. Dean Ambrose said to WWE, or as it stands right now, I'm not re-signing with you guys, or I haven't re-signed with you guys. So what's happening to him right now? They know he's a big star. They're having their future big stars beat him on their television show. So it's the same thing. Like, you know, when Eli at the time, we didn't, you know, we didn't know Eli was going to resign with us or anything like that, do that contract extension. So who are we going to build up? Well, Joe Hendry's coming in. Let's have him feud. Um, you know, and then Joe Hendry beats him, all this kind of stuff. And then Eli's like, yeah, I want to resign with you guys. Okay, well, then Eli's back on top. He's beating guys again, that kind of thing. That's just how the business runs. I mean, it, you're not going to have somebody keep beating your guys all the way out the door. If you don't know that they're committed to the, to the company, you're not going to put them over. I mean, that's just, that's just regular business economics. That's how you do things. So, um, right now, I mean, I, I, I don't know, um, if Eli's going to stay, I really don't. If I had, well, to... what did he say? May, end of May, or was it May 31st? April? May 31st is okay. the end of his contract. Okay. If I had to guess, I think he's gone. I don't think he okay. goes to WWE because, you know, he'll go to NXT. He's, what, 36? And yep. he'll, you know, that's just a waste of his time. I'm not sure if he goes to AEW. I, You know, with the roster they have, I'm worried that he would be in the same position where he is now. The, he, Where's he going? I, I don't know. Maybe he rides the independent circuit. Uh, eh. yeah, but... He's, I don't, I don't he's know. too I don't good know. not to be on TV. I here's my other question: Does Impact even want to pay him the kind of money? Look, Impact is going to more, you know, uh, company friendly contracts, right? We all know it. It's not a secret. They've been letting all these high price contracts go from the old regime. The, Eli signed an extension, but was in my mind. He wasn't probably used right for the money he was getting paid. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. I, I know he or you don't feel like he was used right. But if you look at it, like, you know, you got the main storyline of the world championship of, like, you know, Brian Cage, Killer Crush, Johnny Impact, whatever the case may be. And then you have, what's the next main storyline? Well, it's Eli Drake, pretty much. I mean, if you, if you don't uh, include the female wrestlers, whatever the case Eli Drake's always going to be there and he's going to be a main part of the show. Um, would I like to see him resign? Absolutely. I think that he could be like, and he was at one point, like the world champion. He could be the world champion of this company. They can easily, after this next pay per view, put Eli Drake right, like they can have him beat. No, I don't want to give anything away, but don't. You know, the next person he's feuding with, and then put him right back in the title picture. It's that easy. Um, it just depends. It depends what they want to do. I mean, that's between impact and Eli Drake and I hope he stays. Um, you know, he said on our podcast, you know, he's, he's comfortable with the money he's making. So, you know, does it come down to a money thing? I'm not sure. You know, maybe he wants to make uh, so much more and like, you know, not wrestle. I, I don't know what his goals are. I really don't. He didn't allude to those on our on our podcast, um, it didn't. He didn't make it seem like he was unhappy with Impact. Uh, I, I think he's just more about you know he wants to be involved in some good storylines and just let his character flourish. I guess. I think you hit the nail on the head that if he leaves Impact, I don't think it's a money thing unless someone offers him more money, which you know easily could probably happen depending there's there's a handful of companies out there that might be able to do that but i think it's an opportunity at 36 you know his bump cards he's only has so many left and yeah. you know does he want to be doing what he's doing now or does he want to be the head of a company i i i'd like to think that he could go to AEW and do that but if you look at that the the roster right now 
I I don't know if, if he could walk in there and be the head of that company behind Omega, Jericho, the Bucks. That's that's it. Like you know, they might have him as in that mix, but he's not going to be the guy winning or anything like that. So he's you know stuck in the same spot. And you know, is he going to have? It, it, there's so much stuff to think about. Like you know, in AEW, you know, he, I personally feel since like Cody's a VP and Kenny Omega's a VP and the Bucks a VP, he's not going to get bigger than them. He just won't because they're the VPs. That's just how I, I, I feel about things. They're going to be the guys that the company is going to be centered around. Um, and, you know, if you go to WWE, you got to start at NXT, work your way up. Like, I mean, he's 36. Like you said, who knows? I, I feel like impact is his best spot. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's ultimately it's going to be his decision. That's what it's going to come down to. Let me ask you this. As of this recording, so I don't give anything away, where are we at with the Johnny Impact storyline? Has anything major happened yet? Yeah, I, I believe he, oh, i trying to think, he turned. Okay, so that's all uh, I need to know. That's, that's all yeah. I need to know. Can I say from this set of tapings, the heel, heel Johnny Impact is phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. The, the one match we saw, not going to say anything, phenomenal. You have to watch it, guys, if you're out there. This is the best heel work I've seen in years out of a wrestler. Phenomenal. Yeah, so Johnny Impact, I mean, he, you know, he played a, a heel on WWE or yeah, WWE TV for, for, for many years, you know, seeing him as a baby face to me is kind of odd because I don't feel like he's portrayed as a baby face, his character, but his move set, like, you know, he's total baby face, but, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to be good. I, I don't think a lot of people were expecting that he was going to do that heel turn. So that's phenomenal. Yep. Um, I know we had, his Scott was mad at me. I don't want to give anything away, but um, we kind of filmed out of order um, the impact tapings. We filmed something, oh, you know, yeah. that's not going to air for many weeks. We filmed it like one of the first things we did, and then we messed up. Or uh, Scott didn't mess up. Like I messed up, and I said, "Yeah, we did this," and um, you know, he's like, "Yeah, but this didn't happen yet." And I'm like, "Oh crap, I didn't know that because we, even though we filmed it yesterday, it didn't happen yet, and all this kind of stuff." So. A lot of confusion when you film out of order. It's hard to keep everything in order, um, like in all these like little minute details. And yeah, I mean, I remember Scott being really upset about it, and you know, I, I apologized him. But I mean, what can you do? What's done is done. Before we get to the Willie Mac interview, which I'm excited for, one of my favorites. I have to say, once again, you know, we get there. I'm excited. I think this is the tapings we're finally going to be able to do something with. With impact, and we're oh yeah, and we're still waiting around. With you know, I yeah, like, well, I, I mean, even shaved for that, that Pete. So, I even shaved. Yeah, yeah, I I know, and you know, I'm kind of upset because I really thought, I really thought we were gonna do something on Twitch. I really did, and then you know, the more I hit the line that where it's like, you know, we need to sit down and talk. Like so, so thank you everybody for tweeting the more. And, and, and getting them like, you know, like, yeah, you guys, you know, need to have a, uh, these guys on Twitch, like these guys, meaning me and Dennis on, on Twitch. Um, and, but it's at the point where Scott, you know, recognizes us now, finally, <laughs> but it's also at the point where Scott's like, well, where do we go from here? That's great that the people want to see you guys on Twitch, but now what do we do? You know? So now it's more of a logistics thing. And of course, when, you know, Scott says, Hey, let's sit down and talk. We're not going to be able to talk during the impact tapings because there's so much other stuff going on. I knew that was going to happen. So yeah. that's more of a, uh, you know, hurry up and wait. Like, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but thank you so much. Everybody that listens and has, has been, you know, tweeting Scott and all that case made all that stuff. Um, Scott's finally taken notice. Uh, now it's just a, a logistic thing. Now, uh, can I get you to text them and set up a, a, a dinner date? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to do that. Yeah, because you know he he's not coming here. You know, but we're gonna have to go to him. Should I invite him with Jeff? No, you know what? I want Jeff solo. 
Right. Um, yeah, Jeff Solo. Yeah, c- Jeff Solo, because he's going to have some stories that are going to be great, and I know the people are going to love him. Um, but I mean, maybe we need to invite Scott up and be like, "Hey, man, come, come this is what house. we are." Yeah. Do you think he can I mean, show up? Does he know where America is? <laughs> um yeah he does i just i i don't know if uh he, here's the thing dennis i don't know if we have to be like yeah this is how we're gonna do it and this is what's gonna work or like i i, I think that's what maybe he's waiting for i really do like i i think this whole twitch thing is like it, it's it's a newer type of concept and doing a, a video podcast that's a newer type of concept too i think it's just it just really comes down to a logistic thing that I just think nobody has any ideas for. And I think we're going to have to be the ones that are be like, this is how we're going to do it. This is why it's going to work. Let's do it. And I think we just have to stick to our guns. I think we do it the same way we do this. It's you and I sitting around talking and I'd rather it be audio. And then they can put up some graphics over us if we have guests and stuff and then, you know, send them the audio I don't know if I really wanted, because you're you're not going to come out to my house, and I'm not going to come out to your house once a week. It's just, you know, unrealistic. I don't, yeah, no, I, I I agree, but I, I when we're doing the tapings, I would like to do some Twitch content. I, I would really would it. like I being would. like, hey, you know, this is a special for us. You know, we have whatever Eli Drake here. Let's do this podcast uh, via Twitch. I I would love to. That that like I said, that is. That's my dream gig right now is to do something on just on even on Twitch. And we've I feel like we've uh leapt several hurdles that have been in our way and uh bypassed some hurdles and we're making headway. Yeah, no, I mean we're definitely noticed. Uh Impact knows about us and some of them. I I yeah, yeah I definitely feel like they they want us. It's just, again, it comes down to a, how do we do this without making it seem like it's, we're just doing it because. What about a conference we have to make, call? What's that? What about a conference call with Scott? That seems more reasonable. <laughs> Set up a conference call with Scott? Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's how we have to get to him. I guess you're right, Dennis. Now, the next order of business, because I like to handle the stuff out, you know, out in the open in front of the fans, Pete. Yeah. WrestleMania weekend's coming up. I'm having yep. a WrestleMania party, which I'm giddy about. Did you did you see my banner? Uh, yeah, and did, it's gonna be good. Yeah. So, do we do any any? Should this just be a party and let's enjoy ourselves, or should we break yeah. out the uh, periscope and do something? Nah, you know. I think we have a party and we leave it at that. Yeah, I think we have a party, leave it at that, and then we can just talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't want to periscope it. I, I just want to no. enjoy it yes. and not have to. Uh, yeah, and then we could uh, we'll say recap. We can recap it. Because I'm, I'm excited. This is this is kind of turning out to be a, a who's who event. Because yeah, you'll be there. I remember it used to be my WrestleMania party, and you stole it from me, so now it's your party. I, okay, I did, I did, and you can cry if you want to, because uh, it's my party. Yeah, you um, you lost a loser leaves town match. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, you know, I, I I like not hosting the party. Um, I started doing it because I, I I wanted the people you know like that liked wrestling to come together, but I'm like, man, you know, like. It's WrestleMania. I, like when I start, first started doing it, WrestleMania was always done before midnight. Then it started creeping past midnight. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I don't want you guys in my house anymore. Like, get out of here. Um, so now it's great that I can go to somebody else's house and be like, hey, uh, I'm going to leave like three matches before the main event and just, you know, see ya. And I don't have to worry about like all that other kind of stuff, like kicking people out of my house. So, um, yeah, thanks, Dennis, for taking it over. I did have I did take Monday off of work, so I am I'm gonna stay up and watch the whole thing. And there's okay. there's always gonna be the one or two people that won't leave. So I'm antici- oh, yeah. I'm anticipating that. And I you know, I think you'll be one of the first people to leave if I have to put my money on it. I, yeah, I would say you're probably right, so I'm not gonna bet you on that. No, yeah. 
So you will probably be the first one to leave. And then there will probably be a handful of people that will all leave around the same time. And I'm going to guess that's about match four or five. Four or five? I think there's like 13 matches. I want to say you're going to have people there up until like probably 11-ish, maybe a little bit like 11.30. Because normally that's when the pay-per-views would normally end back right. in the day. Okay. 11 o'clock. People like a lot of their time until 11 o'clock. But now it's like... People are going to be like, oh, I'll stay for one more match, and then they'll leave after 11 o'clock. We'll have plenty of food, veggie tray. Now, do we get pizza or subs? Uh, pizza. Okay. All right. I'm just I'm just trying to figure figure things out. You know, we'll have plenty of beer. I, I, I almost toyed with the idea of charging everybody, making people bring, like, either a six-pack or a bourbon to get into the party, you could, but that's like uh, you could you could still do that. I mean, why not, right? Uh, I remember my my first WrestleMania party. It was the first year where no, I'm sorry, I, I had a I had a party before the network was on the air. But then uh, as I was going on, when we had the network, like other people that had the network, they still came to the party. And I'm like, why are you coming to the party? Like, you know, you already have the network. And like, oh, you know, I just come for the food and stuff like that and to hang out because. I mean, it's 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 not about the show. It's about uh, like hanging out with other people that mm-hmm. um, like wrestling. And that's it. I I you know I'm not inviting any non wrestling fans because the one thing I don't want is for someone to be like, "Who's that guy? Why is he doing that?" Well, you know, oh, that's like when my wife comes down and delivers like the the tray of goodies, and she's like. Uh, who is this? Who's that? Is John Cena on yet? I'm like, get out of here, you know? Yeah, um, yep. Just because she knows nothing about wrestling. So, yeah, uh, wrestling fans that you don't have to explain what wrestling is to them, that, that's who we enjoy. So, doors open at six. That's what we've agreed on, right? Yep, free but, tickets at the door. Yeah, but you can come as early as you want because you're Petey Williams. All right, I'll probably come at six, um, seven. Whoa. Wow, fashionably late. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and, you know, I'm excited. So thank you. This has been a fun podcast. I can't wait. Willie Mac, Pete. Willie Mac. Willie Mac, one of my favorites. Um, I wish she was in WrestleMania, man. I'd, I'd love that. Oh, no, you wouldn't because then Impact would lose him. Yeah, then he wouldn't be on Impact, but whatever. I mean, I wish everything was just a cross promotion that didn't care about contracts or anything like that. Um, just that's how good William Mack is. That's how much I love him. I do too. All right, Pete. Uh, in in about for you for you the listener, it will be like instantaneous. But for me and Pete, we're gonna hang up and have a conversation and gossip about what we just gossiped about, and then you know I'll cut it up and put it on. But hang on, because here comes Willie Mack, Petey Williams, Dennis Furl back here, wrestling perspective. Pete, our next guest. What? Tell me the story. When you, because listen, I've been a Willie Mack fan for a long time now, about a year or so. And when I first said, hey, he signed with Impact, let's let's get him on our podcast. You're like, you know what? I got a great story about Willie Mack. I, I did? Yeah, you were talking about how he came up to you and said that he had taken the bus to see one of your shows. Yeah, I think that one of the first times I actually met Willie. Um, well, first, let me introduce Willie. Everybody, Willie Mack. Welcome, Willie. What's up? How y'all doing? So one of the first interactions I had with Willie was uh, House of Hardcore. I think it was maybe his first show there. And uh, he came up to me and he started talking. And he was like, hey, man, uh, I remember, you know, you from PWG. Yep. And I was like, okay, I'm trying to think, Willie, when did he wrestle for PWG? And then I'm like, oh, when was this? He's like, man, I was, I was sitting in, I, you know, I'd take the bus and I'd, I was sitting in that back row or whatever watching you or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, oh. Okay, so I guess we're friends then. I guess that's pretty much how it went. Is that, is that how it went? Pretty much. I used to show up to every PWG show when they was at the little spot in Los Feliz, the, the little sweat box gym. Was it the, the, the Jewish Community Center? Yep. That, that one, JCC, yeah. That one right off Hollywood or Sunset Boulevard, one of them. And, yeah, I met you. You had the long hair back then, <laughs> and Sabin and AJ and everybody else was always there, and I met y'all, and you were some cool folks. And now, years later, I end up wrestling. <laughs> and we did wrestle that night. That was the first time we actually wrestled. And now you're like, what, House of Hardcore champion, right? Ish. Basically. Basically. I'm the TV champ, but I'm the only champion. So I guess I, I run the house. Yeah. 
I, so well, I got to ask you then, uh, you're one of the few people that we've talked to that, that, that talk openly now about, I was a fan. I've been in these rows. A lot of guys are like, I haven't, you know, I was working out and I got into wrestling. It was an outlet to make money. So what was the tipping point? What was the point where you're sitting in there? You go, you know what? I'm going to do this. Well, found out where a wrestling school was. And instead of sitting on the couch watching the wrestling, I said, I'm going to go out there and do it. Because it's like... Come from where I was at the hood, you ain't got much around you. You can play football, basketball, or some kind of sports activity, be a rapper or something like that. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna be a pro wrestler. We travel, make money, and put smiles on people's faces, and that's what I like to do. Do you still geek out when you see guys backstage like, oh my gosh, that's Petey Williams, or or, or do you are you above that now? Oh, you ain't never above it. Hell, if it's somebody I like coming up as a kid or. Even now, I'll still be like, hey, what's up, man? It's nice to finally meet you. It's because it's like nobody's really different from me. We all breathe. We all eat. We all sleep. We get hurt. So we just about the same. Yesterday, Pete, I walk up to him. He's standing there just, just hanging out. I think he's probably even listening to music. I'm like, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan. I'm like geeking out over right? Trying to be still professional. <laughs> trying to slip in, hey, will you do my podcast? You know, yeah. one of those things. And part of me wanted to be like, dude, you're a national treasure. I just want to hug you. Yeah. So, <laughs> Willie, we talk about you, and it's not just me and Dennis. It's everybody around. We Obviously, you're not backstage watching your matches because you're actually out there performing them. Yeah. So when we're watching, you're like, man, Willie, we love that guy, man. Like, you, you have a different reaction from everybody else than – you just have you have this something about you like with your facial expressions you glow. and all that. Yeah. You, you glow and it's it, you can tell that you love what you're doing. You see a lot of guys out there and they're either playing characters and can hide it well or they just don't care, but you care and we can tell. Yeah, and I mean and you are like you're on a rise up obviously and you know, and I never really seen you have ever pretty much like a bad attitude or anything. You see a lot of bad attitudes in wrestling. What keeps you like humble and like level-headed? Well, just knowing it's a lot of things that go in it to get to this point. I had to go through a lot of things, and it's like pretty much never forget where you came from Mm -hmm. and just treat everybody the way you want to be treated and keep going about it that way. If somebody need a help a hand in the back, I'm sure if somebody need a seat, I'll give it up to them. It's just like keeping that kind of mentality because at the end of the day, we all still people. So a lot of people get that from, like, the school they went to – like you know, the, the wrestling facility and who trained them. Like who 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 brought you up and uh, mentored you up the way? Yeesh, too many people. <laughs> too many people. It's a bunch of people. Well, like Aaron Aguilera. Oh yeah, I know Aaron. T. Yeah. T. J. Perkins. Oh yeah. Rocky Romero. Joey Ryan. Uh. Who's who? Martin Marine. Little Cholo. Too many people. It's a bunch more. I can't really. Oh, Carl Anderson a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Kozlov. Okay. And I'm forgetting somebody. I know it's one more I'm forgetting. I know they're going to get mad at me about it. But, hey, I had too many people help train me. So that's what, what happens. As a fan going to shows, how do you build the Willie Mac character? I mean, you have to have been sitting there even before the first day of training going, you know, I, I want to be A, B, C, and D, or I want to structure the character I'm going to play like this. It, it, we all do it. I, I still do it today when I pretend that I want to be a wrestler at 41. What what were some of the traits or the characteristics that you want to build into who you are becoming now on TV? Uh, it was just me watching wrestling as a kid. You knew what you liked. You knew you liked to see the high-flying stuff from the cruiserweights, the hard-hitting from the heavyweights, some of the striking and stuff from the Japanese folks. So I kind of looked at all that. And, like, mixed it all into one because I don't want to just be, like, one style of person. I want to mix everything that I've learned into one package, and that's me pretty much. And I ain't really no character. I'm just being me. It's like when you're out there in the ring, it's you with the volume turned all the way up. So I'm just like this 24-7 pretty much, and I just do it in front of people instead of just by myself at home. I, I see people give you adulation, and you 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 almost become boy like sometimes, where you, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Maybe uh, is is this something that you're working on? Uh, like fans coming up to you, and uh, you hear a lot of famous people talk about how they can't adjust to that kind of lifestyle. How do you, as a regular person, adjust to now? You're sitting at Arby's or Burger King, and like three people come up like Willie Mac. Oh my gosh, I love you. 
how, how do you adjust or, or grow off that? Uh, I just take it for what it is. I'm like, I know how it was when I was a fan. You run into your favorite entertainer or whatever it is, and you want to, like, go up to them. Like, I still go up to them and just be like, what's up, and just go on about my business. So, like, when people come up to me, it ain't no big thing. I just be like, all right, let me take a bite of this sandwich real quick and wipe my hands with this napkin, and I'll sign the picture or take an autograph, autograph or anything you want. See, that's that's what happened to us. Now, I wasn't going to tell you this story on the air, but uh, I go pick up PD at his house yesterday. I'm at Burger King, and this guy comes up. I'm wearing my Impact hoodie, and he's like, are you, are you an Impact fan? I go, yeah, absolutely, man. I get to hang out with these guys. I live life. And he, we're talking. He's like, do you know PD Williams? I'm like, absolutely I know PD. He goes, have you ever listened to his podcast? Now, this is happening. I go, yeah, I, I, I co-host with him. <gasps> That's you? And so I'm talking to this guy, and he's like, oh, man, I, I love your hoodie. I wish I could get one. I'm like, go online and get one. He's like, oh, man, I don't have that kind of money. I take it off and give it to him. And guess what? He didn't even get like a free burger in return. No, but, <laughs> but but I know what you mean by somebody comes up to you and they're a fan. You you want to be what they hope you are. Yeah, and I mean I've always done that too, and like, and I, I don't care if I'm eating or whatever. I know some wrestling you know wrestlers are like, oh wait till I'm done eating and come mm-hmm. back or whatever. I'll stop because I I always put myself in their shoes mm-hmm. and and say like. If I, if I was a kid coming up to – I remember the first – do you remember the first wrestler you actually ever met? I remember I met Tito Santana. You know, that that was the first, like, pro wrestler I ever met. I was a kid. And I, I couldn't imagine – if he were to blow me off, that would have turned me away from wrestling uh, forever. But do you remember, like, the first wrestler you actually ever met? Yeah, Human Tornado. The Human Tornado? Yep. back when I first started going to – What was your interaction with him? I know Human Tornado. I've wrestled him. It was cool. It was just he was outside just chilling, smoking his black and mild. And I was like, oh, it's the human tornado. You going to go out there and kick some butt tonight? He was like, hell yeah, brother. You going to be in the crowd? I'm like, yeah. He was like, all right, then I'll see you there. I was like, cool. That made me happy because he was the hottest thing going for a while. Yeah, no, he was. I remember he like he had the – the he, he would no-sell the nut shot, yep. you know, because he's got – Balls mm, of yeah. steel. Balls of steel, that's what it was. And then he'd do the, the pimp slap right after yep. that. All stuff you can't do now. But, I mean, I guess you can <laughs> do it. But um, so it was like guys like that inspiration to you. Like I, I noticed your finishing move is the Stone Cold Stunner. Yep. Is he like one of your favorites? Was that your era that you watched growing up? Like was that your, your – your, like if you had to go back and watch wrestling or what really got you involved in wrestling, was it that attitude era with Stone Cold and them? Yeah, it was the old school like Hulk Hogan, Warrior, Macho Man, okay. all them. And then – Oh, Stone Cold came along and The Rock and Shawn Michaels. So Stone Cold was like, he connected with people because who didn't want to beat up their boss? Oh, yeah. Everybody. He got to do that every week and not get in trouble for it. Wow. Well, and he got arrested sometimes, well, but he came back he got, and he yeah, beat him up again. I don't think yeah. it's on his record, though, guys. <laughs> yeah, probably it's not. Sponged. What does What does Willie Mack do when Willie Mack's not a wrestler? Yeah. Uh. Willie Mac sits at home, plays video games, mm. and gets oh, oh. a couple movies on Netflix or Hulu. Wait, wait, wait! Video games now. I'm I'm not a very good video game nerd, but I am one. What What do we play? What's What's oh, your Overwatch? See, I just got it. Are you PS? You're a PS4 guy then? Yep. Oh my gosh, PD! Do you think, do you think I can ask him to a video game with me? Uh, yeah. I mean, when we get offline, I get get a screen name and stuff like that. <gasps> play some Overwatch. I don't even know what Overwatch is. Don't I mean, worry, don't worry. Okay. You just stand there and be we'll, Canadian. We'll talk, okay, all right. <laughs> all right. I, you know, I, I don't play the video games. The video games, you know. I... See, see, here's the thing. I got Overwatch to play with Chris Saban. I'm like, yo, because Chris and I are slowly becoming friends. Yeah. And and Saban's like, ah, yo, know, I have a PS4, but the only game I play is Overwatch. I'm like, all right, I'll go get it. I go out, I get it, and I start playing this. And now you'll appreciate this because I'm I'm a little bit older than you. I'm gonna guess. So I'm I'm playing this game mode. If you if you you know the tr- the training where it's like five regular people versus five computer people. Oh, the yeah. Player versus PI. Yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So I'm I'm in this mode playing, it and I'm beasting people. 17, 18, 19 kill streak. I'm. And I have my headset on. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm a natural. This is the first time I've played. I'm, I'm killing you guys. And I hear this voice, you know, how sometimes you hear a guy plug in, plugs in and does a, you know, goes, uh, hey, idiot, and you're playing against a computer. computer. And then it's like, ah, oh. <laughs> the deflated, like, kick in the balls. Like, I want to hang up and just go cry in the corner. 
Are, are you pretty good at Overwatch, Willie? Would you I say? I guess so. Oh. Does, are you like ranked? I mean, how, how does this? Thing, I don't know how it works. I guess I shouldn't be asking these questions because people are probably like, "Peter, you're such an idiot." Old know. man Canadian. Yeah, I guess old man. Yeah, Pete. they got like regular mode, which is like quick play games. You could just get in there and play with people, and then they got competitive mode, where like you can rank up. Right now, I'm at platinum level, and that's twenty seven thousand points. Jesus. You gotta get, and I'm. What are you at, level. Dennis? Hold on. What are you at? Four. Four points? Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> 27,000 from Willie. You need a nerdy sidekick or anything because that's about all I can do. Maybe if you want to join. I do. Me and a bunch of other folks be playing, and it's pretty cool when you got, like, a good squad. Because the talk. It's more than the game. It's hanging out with your buddies. Yep. Thank you. Like, my homie in Australia play with us. Another homie in Japan plays with us. Mexico. Like, we all different parts of the world, and we just together on a video game just – talking like we right next to each other and having fun do you think they'd accept my bad gameplay i'll let them make fun of me all they want maybe a few of them probably carry you though that's all i'm good with that i <laughs> that's what i do best is be carried <laughs> all right w- willie where can people find oh pete wait wait pete. yeah this is my thing willie all right where can people find you uh find your t-shirts merchandise all that kind of stuff social media well, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. My username is Willie underscore Mac. I follow him. And then you could go on Pro Wrestling Tees, pick up some of my shirts. I got pets to feed, so that would help me out a bunch. <laughs> pets? And, uh, you got pets? Yeah, I got like, what do I got? Parrot? I got a gerbil. A gerbil. Two turtles, three cats, a dog, and a bearded dragon. Jesus, <laughs> I'm hanging out with We Bought a Zoo over here. Well, yeah, I got a lot of pets to feed. And then uh, where else can you catch me? I'm on Twitch, too. <laughs> yeah, I think my t- Twitch name is WillieMac87. I got a Snapchat. I forgot that. My PSN is easy as WillieMac1. So, yeah, there we go with that. Sure. And uh, what else do I need? That's about it. I think I got everything covered. Social security oh, number? <laughs> Social security Facebook number. Facebook <laughs> is WillieMac. And my Facebook fan page is official Willie Mac because I got too many friends and I can't add people. So y'all going to have to check up on that. I put updates whenever I can, wherever I'm at in the month. And, uh, yeah, that's how people can find me. Can I ask you one more question? Go ahead. First big break. You're on TV. What what do you do? Do you go back and watch your match over and over again on TV? Do you geek out? Can you, can you talk? Because I love – you as a success story right Mm -hmm. and i love you as a character and i can only imagine you rushing home afterwards dvring it whatever night it comes on and just watching it back and back turtles gerbil cats dog like check this out i made it like that i made it moment like at first i still don't really like to watch my matches because it's like you in there people talking about how fast you moving and how this look how that look when you go back and look at yourself, you be like, oh, I don't look like I'm going too fast. I look like I'm going slow. Yeah, you're your worst critic, yeah. And I'll be like, uh. And other people are like, no, it was great. What you talking about, man? People liked it. I'm like, oh, okay. So I know it's probably good matches, but, like, when I watch them, I just kind of, like, judge myself. Be like, I could have did that better. But sometimes you got to watch your own stuff just to kind of know the next time you're in the ring what to do and what not to do. And what moves to try out and what not to try out. I completely understand your own worst critic. But, uh, Willie, uh, thanks so much for uh, for stopping by. And I look forward to watching you tonight. Oh, sweet. Thanks for having me on. All right. That was Willie Mack. Thank you, Willie Mack, for sitting down and talking to Petey Williams and myself. Guys, don't forget, head over to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com. Make sure you subscribe. You can click on the pictures. Get to wherever you get your podcast. We're on iTunes and Stitcher and Spotify and all that stuff. So hopefully you will go support us. If you get your podcast off Podbean, we're right there. Uh, make sure you like and share and tell a friend. That is one of the most important things to help our show grow. We keep trying to do fun and innovative stuff for you guys, and uh, you guys responded very well. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Pete had to go. He couldn't wait for this part. So I really appreciate each and every one of you guys downloading and listening and tweeting and and being a part of the show. So thank you. Thank you to Impact Fan Nation on Facebook for allowing us to post and get questions uh, or not like part of them but they have been very uh, amazing opening their doors to us so 
uh, more important, subscribe to the podcast. Let us know you're listening. And uh, if you're inclined, you know, head over to Blue Chew. Help us out. Uh, use the promo code Perspective. It'll only cost you five bucks. You go through and you know how to do the computer thing. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys. If you ever need a shout out or anything like that, Pete and I are more than happy. You just... Follow us uh, at IPD Williams on Twitter, me at Dennis77, Farrell, F A R R E L L. There we go, Dennis77 Farrell. There you go on Twitter. Uh, Wrestling Perspective Podcast on Facebook. You can be part of the community there. So hopefully you enjoy the week leading up to WrestleMania. We'll put up some more stuff for you to have some fun with. We really appreciate it and have a good week.